Welcome back to Life and Biology. I'm Dr. Joel Graff, and this is episode number three. Today we're going to be talking about uh, Frederick Griffith's famous experiment. So in the Gregor Mendel uh, discussion, we talked about hereditary, heredity, and that is passing traits from one generation to the next, which is called uh, vertical uh, transmission. Uh, but then we're going to be t today we're going to be talking about horizontal transmission. That is passage of traits from one thing to uh, another um, and this in this particular experiment um, we're going to be talking about bacteria so Fred Griffith he lived 1879 to 1941 he is a bacteriologist and he studied the streptococcal pneumonia bacteria uh, the reason that this uh, bacteria was of interest was that the Europe was just recovering from the Spanish flu of 1918 and a big problem with Spanish flu is secondary infections and so people would get pneumonia often from this from this bacteria now what Fred Griffith wanted to know is he wanted to be he wanted to be able to be able to compare virulent and non-virulent strains and um, with Gregor Mendel he published his data right away but then it was not uh, not really picked up by the scientific community until years and years later. In this ex in this case, Fred Griffith uh, published his data right away, or he he did his experiment, and then quite a while later, it wasn't until a few other groups had had come up with the same data that that he uh, ended up publishing his, so he could get some credit for his work. So the experiment that he did that's so famous is. He was doing inf infections in, in mice, and he was studying rough bacteria, and rough bacteria um, of the streptococcus were non-virulent. And so if you infect a mouse with non-virulent bacteria, the rough bacteria, you end up with a live mouse. However, smooth bacteria have a polysaccharide surface, kind of a sugar coating, and it protects the bacteria from the immune system. And so that allows these bacteria to cause more damage and replicate better, and they end up killing a mouse. Now, if you take these smooth bacteria but heat kill it, um, kill it by, by heating it up, uh, the mouse will live. So the bacteria have to be alive to kill the mouse. But the kind of the, the clincher for this famous experiment is that if he took rough bacteria, remember those are the ones that ended up with a live mouse. If he took those and mixed it together with the heat killed smooth bacteria, those those virulent ones, that you ended up with a dead mouse. And from that mouse, he was able to isolate both rough and smooth bacteria. So so that was interesting. Something's going on between the dead virulent bacteria and the, the live avirulent bacteria. And so the interpretation of this is that the rough bacteria are what he said what he called transformed by acquiring something from the heat killed smooth bacteria. And this something is what he called the transforming principle, but it remained unknown. Um, now the reason this experiment is famous is because it, it, it was a, a paradigm shift. Um, previous to these experiments it was thought that bacteria were immutable they don't change uh, over time they can't change from one type of bacteria to another um, and with any paradigm shift you're going to have some skeptics and what I found interesting is that one of the skeptics was a guy named Oswald Avery and we're going to talk about him pretty soon but Oswald didn't think that the, the experiments could be true. He assumed that maybe uh, Fred Griffith wasn't careful with his controls. However, Oswald Avery got sick about this time and he, he, he left the lab for a few months. And while he was out of the lab, the experiments were confirmed and extended by one of his colleagues. So right there where he worked, some, some guy named Dawson uh, confirmed Fred Griffith's experiments. Um, things he confirmed was if you heat, it up, heat the bacteria up more than 80 degrees you don't get transformation. Um, and he also showed that if you his, his extensions were that if you freeze thaw the, the killed virulent bacteria then um, 
the avirulent bacteria didn't become virulent. And then just to finish off this story, I had mentioned that Fred Griffith died in 1941, and I found this worth noting. He was killed a long time with with his longtime co-worker, a guy named Sky, and um, they were in his apartment in London during World War II when a bomb hit their 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 flat uh, or apartment uh, dur during an air raid. So I thought that was kind of a, a, an interesting twist or interesting side note for the for the Fred, Fred Griffith story. But we'll be following up the Fred Griffith story with. Uh, uh, more discussion about Avery along with McLeod and McCarty. So stay tuned. Thanks.